<laughs> okay, all right, we've uh, messed around for five minutes, so um, let's start uh, talking about what we're here for, which is ClickFunnels 2.0. The fans go wild, yes. Um, first off, let me let me do a couple things here because I want to make sure of a couple things. Um, first off, if you have a question and you want to raise your hand, just go down to the bottom and you click on something down there at the bottom. Uh, reaction, I think, is what you click on. And then you click on raise your hand and it'll put a little hand in your window. So we can all see that there. <coughs> and then I know you have a question. Uh, if you have any 1.0 questions, put those into the group. If you have any more like really specific or, well, like you're working on your own 2.0 and you got a question about that, put that in the group as well. Today is going to be mostly kind of a big big overview of everything that I've found with 2.0 since working on it for the last, you know, really less just two weeks that I've really, really started working on it. I first saw it in March when Andrea, who's in the CCX program, she, she got access to it. In, I think it was March, right? And so that's the first time I saw it. And I just said to myself at that point, okay, this is nice. And I'll let somebody else be the guinea pig. Because I don't want to be, you know, busting my head up against the wall for six months on what was then pretty rough. And like, as in like very, very rough. And so I just kind of begged off on it for a while. Then I got my own count. What, July? Is that when they gave it to the Funnel Hacking Live people? Something like that. June, maybe. And so, but I really have not jumped in full bore until like a couple weeks ago. And I'm really loving what I'm seeing. So now, as a disclaimer, I just want to say, I am not a ClickFunnels employee, period. That's it. I'm not an employee. I don't represent them. They don't give me any money except a little bit of affiliate commissions. That's it. So I do not work for ClickFunnels. So if you have a question about what is the pricing going to be, the only indication I have ever seen, um, um, don't be a smart ass, Andrea. <laughs> uh, no, you don't. I mean, you keep it real, Dan, right? Like, that's why we love about you, you know? Like, you keep it real, and I appreciate that. So, like, for you to not only be excited, but say you loving what you're seeing, like, that's, um, like, next-level, trust-level awesomeness right there well, for me. <laughs> it, it took a while for them to get there and for me to figure out a few things and learn a few things along the way. But um, what I was going to say was um, pricing-wise, I think is where I started with, uh, pricing wise, the only indication I have seen regarding pricing was when they released it to the funnel hacking live people. There was a thing at the bottom that said, you know, $97 after the first two weeks. That is the only indication of pricing I've seen and talking to the, uh, coaches in the certification program, which I'm in right now, talking to them, they don't know anything either or they are sworn to secrecy and say that they don't know anything. I really don't know. What is going to be available October 4th? Another thing, we don't know at this point. Um, some of the trainers in the group have access to funnels, some do not. Some have access to membership course areas, some do not. So not even all the employees have seen all of the features that we have not seen yet. But I have seen just for about a three second glimpse the other day, I saw what the funnel editor is going to look like. Somebody opened up their screen and it was on there and I saw it for a couple of seconds. And I have a picture of what they showed here at Funnel Hacking Live last year. And of course, as soon as I get going, my dog wants to go outside. So this is what they showed us at Funnel Hacking Live last year and what I saw on the screen was not exactly this, but it was close enough to this to tell me that we're going to get basically what they said we're going to get. So let me just pause my video for a second and let me let my dog outside. Okay, that's not a great open loop. I don't know what is. That was pretty good. That was, that was, I think he planted the dog thing because that was pretty good. We got to give it to him. <laughs> That was funny. Okay. I just barely got us to go live in our group Yay! and then he leaves to let us talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Warren, it's nice to see your face. We only ever see your little porn. <laughs> so. What? Okay. Well, Warren, 
he shows up sometimes on geeks and so i always just see porn so it's nice to actually yeah i just start, i just found you guys so yeah <laughs> your, your words have a head that's awesome yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right dan we were saying how great of an open loop that was and you probably planted the dog thing but okay we'll be uh, quiet now go, yeah do your no, thing. no she had to go outside and they're i still got two puppies here and they they're getting much better, but it ain't always done outside. Let's just put it that way. Um, so, um, okay. So that's, so like I said, that was enough of a glimpse for me to say, okay, that's coming. Is that going to be released October 4th? I have no idea. And nobody I talked to is saying yay, nay, or anything else. So I really don't know at this point. So, um, if somebody has some questions along the way, like I said, reactions at the bottom, click on raise your hand, or if you really have to just yell out, go ahead, unmute yourself and yell at me because what I'm going to do, unless somebody has something better for me to do and along the way, just let me know. I'm just going to go through some of the stuff, mostly in the editor, just to show you um, what they're what they're providing for us. And like I said, at first it was pretty badly broken, but now... Um, it's, it's starting to look good. So let me just go over here to 1.0. So let me just open up a 1.0 just to show you the differences and what is similar, um, between the two of them here. So let me, I've got so many things. Oh, you guys can see that, huh? Let me close that. Um, let me see what else you can see on the screen. Okay. I don't need the chat open probably either. Do I? Okay. Everything you just closed, we can't see, Dan. <laughs> oh, you couldn't see that? Really? Okay. Because um, I. Uh, well, I can see your eCam live thing that you're moving around. You can see the eCam live thing. Okay. So let yeah, me, yeah. Let me close that too, then. That and your ClickFunnels window is all that we see. Okay. Well, I think if I close that, it's gonna it's gonna kill the recording. So let me just put that down there. Um, okay. So, you know, in the old, the old way of doing it, you had your section, your rows and whatnot up here at the top, and you could come up here and you say, add, add a full width row and you drop it in. And the, um, the section was always, let me skinny this up a little bit. Um, the section was always green. It still is green. And then you can put in a row and let's just put in a two column row that comes in in blue. It's still blue. Elements are still orange. So everything you had in here, once you see it in a second in the other, is going to be very, very familiar. They do have a go back button that actually works all the time. At least it seems to. It's much more robust than we have here. We got pop-ups. Settings are, they're, they're kind of spread out around the place um, a little bit more than in here. And then, of course, you got your mobile and your desktop. And so, like I said, it's going to look very similar. So in order to get into, at this point here, all we have essentially is the funnel hubs, which think WordPress, because that's essentially what they've done here is they have duplicated everything except one aspect of WordPress that is really kind of proprietary to WordPress, which is the WP loop, which is what determines the order of the items you're going to see. Uh, in your in your blog, but I would guess how it's going to work is you're going to see whatever is most recent one anyway. So I clicked on to go into let's uh, go back here to that. So I came in here to sites and funnels, and eventually you will have the ability to build your funnels down here. But right now we're just going to have pages. You can put in you can put in domains, you can put in images, you can put in videos, you can put in audio files, you can even put in custom fonts as well if you want into here but we're just going to go into our pages and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say here i'm going to add a new page so we got our standalone pages we have theme pages and we have site pages the site pages are the ones so when you're building think of building a, a wordpress blog again you're going to have your home page you're going to have your about page your resources page you know whatever all your different pages are they're calling those site pages Standalone pages can be anything else that you want for whatever reason. So you could be building something to do with a funnel and send somebody to a page of whatever for some reason. So um, a either way, how it's going to work is the editor is going to look the same for all of this. So I'm just going to start with a blank one here. And we're just going to say Q&A demo. And as you do that, it populates the, uh, the path right here in the URL. And it tells you if it's available 
available or not because of course you can't have more than one path uh, matching for the given URL that you're using here. And so we're going to come in here and you see here is a list of all of my standalone pages. Now from in here, if I wanted to make this a site page, make it part of my blog essentially, you just come over here and you click on edit and you say right here, pin this page to site pages in the editor. Then what will happen, in fact, I'll just show you that real quick and we'll update that page. And then when I come back out to here, let me see here. Now I want to go here. Is that where I want to go? The, I'll tell you, the navigation in here is a little, little tricky. But if I go here to customize, this is going to take me to the home page of my blog. And now you see all these site pages over here. So I'm building out a blog here as part of the certification program. And so all these pages go right along with it. So I'm going to go to that demo page we started on. But so where I showed you with that image, and I think I closed it out, um, all, the, all the stuff for your funnel pages that you're building, all the steps in your funnel, that's all going to be right over here in the left sidebar. So just like on 1.0 where we have all of our steps going down the left-hand side, but on a different page that you have to go out to, all of your steps for your funnel are going to be right down here along the side as well. And then, of course, inside of here is going to be all of your, your analytics and your follow-up funnels and all that stuff is going to be built right onto the singular page. So you don't have to go hunting all over the world to try to find it. Um, so inside of here on this left sidebar, you can click this down arrow. It gives you access again to all of the pages that you've built, essentially all your theme pages, everything else. And then you got your site pages and et cetera along here. Now down here at the bottom is a style guide. And we'll get into that a little bit as we're going along because uh, it uh, comes in handy. And then we got this here um, just opens and closes the page. So we'll leave it open for now. Now across the top, we will come back to that one, but let's go to settings first. And we're going to go to, so we got settings here, we got code, and that will, that's where you can put in your custom CSS and your header and tracker footing, uh, header, <laughs> header and footer tracking code. You got your pop-up you can build here. And then under my assets, you got all kinds of templates and saved sections and rows and everything that you built plus all kinds of stuff that ClickFunnels has pre-built for you. So there's all of this in here, and it just kind of keeps going forever and ever and ever. And I'm not even close to, I mean, look at, I mean, this, this is the list of all of them here that they have, and you can, as you go along, save them yourself as well. So um, let's go into settings, and let's go to background. And we're going to say we want to turn the background on. And we here we can put in an image like before, so we'll click on this. And we can put in an image and we'll drop this here. And here is the image I stole from Andrea at one point and she's not getting it back. And so you can put in an image here and then we'll go back into the settings for the background. And then we can say here, image style, full center, parallax, just like we had in 1.0. And we'll just say here, no repeat. And then if your image is too small to fit the area, you can actually click in here uh, I'm sorry, if it's too big for the area, you can click in here and you will actually move where the image is positioned around on the screen. So you want to have a little bit different look on each one. You can kind of move it around like that. And then if we were to take out this image, we can just do a colored background. And of course, you can make your colors anything you want. And down here at the bottom, let's get this out of the way. Okay, you guys can see that too. Okay, that would make sense. Um, down here, these colors actually come in from the color palette that you set inside of the style guide. So you're going to set, they give you eight different colors you can set in there. Now, what I wish they would add on top of this is the ability to that whatever color you happen to use at some point, that that would also populate here and give you like another eight or 10 colors in order to choose from on the fly. Otherwise, you know, you, you keep using a color that's not part of this palette, you, you got to remember what the hex code is. So um, I should probably put in a, a ticket on that. And so then change the colors just like you would in 1.0 and you can change the opacity. But the one thing that is new in here is the gradients. So they actually have a built-in gradient tool in here 
And so you can make it go top to bottom, left to right, make it go diagonally as well. But the other thing is you can click along this bar and you can add in other breakpoints. So we can make this breakpoint now blue and we can make this look however we want. We can move it back and forth. Now, the whole thing's a little bit clunky. And frankly, if I'm putting in gradients, I'll probably still use a gradient tool to build it with. But it is built in here. And if, especially if you got just two colors and you want to go all the way across or all the way top to bottom, it's probably a good way to put in the colors. And then the other thing they have here, well, we can leave that gradient on if we want. Um, what did I do? Let's go here. Make that really nice and bright in the middle. Because the other thing they have here is foreground color. So we turned on the foreground color and now it's set right now at 50%. So it put a color over the top of this. So in fact, let me move that over. That makes more sense. Um, so now it put a color over the top of this so we can move it down. In the past, in order to do this, you needed to do CSS and you needed to use a, an after or before pseudo element in order to do this. And now they have it built right in here and you of course could make it anything you would like. And it takes, you know, a couple of clicks and you can, you can put this in here. So you got it, you got a background image. You shouldn't have closed that. You put in a background image and, um, let's just put Russell in the background and oops, I keep clicking. There, there's a couple other things in here too, is it, it's more of a hair trigger on when you click on stuff. So let's just make him full center. And so now we got the color over the top of him, the foreground color over the top of him. And so that's an easy way to just to wash out that background like that, that it doesn't take any code at all now, which as soon as I saw some of the stuff, I was like, well, I'm out of business. Nobody needs me anymore, but that's not true. So, all right, so we got that set, but let's, let's kill the background so we don't have to look at that all day long. And then in here, you also have typography. And so you got your, all your content fonts and here you have a custom font. So I put in one custom font and all you got to do is where you go load up the custom fonts is you just take your OTF, TTF file, whatever it is, and just drop it in there. And a couple seconds later, boom, that font is in your page now. Plus then they got just every Google font there is out there in here. Plus who knows, maybe it's not just Google fonts. It's, it, it could be all kinds of stuff. I don't really know what's what they all have there. And then editor settings, you can change element hover timer, hover intense sensitivity. I haven't played around with this, but um, I probably should. Um, Susan, this might help you with some of the problems you were having earlier today. But what we found, um, we were found earlier, is that if you put negative margin on a text element, so the ne so it pulls the one on the bottom up over the top of the one above it that it's really hard to get in to be able to click to add another element. And so the solution is just change the, just change the margin at the top and it'll fix it. So now let's go in here and let's just build something. So we're going to add a new section and we can just, we can come over here and look at all of these pre-made sections and we can just one click, drop that in there and away you go. You're, you're starting. So, but let's click that out and we got to add a new section and we're just going to say a full section. Now we see what happened there is it didn't close the sidebar. What it did is it took me from adding a section to now adding a row and to now adding the elements. And every time I click on an element, it doesn't close the sidebar. It lets me continue just to put in more and more and more elements. So if you know what your page is going to look like, you can build out your entire page in a couple of minutes if you've already got the whole thing wireframed out. So you can really blow through here fast. And so, like I said, we got, we got green sections, we got blue rows, and we got orange elements, exactly like we had in 1.0. And I guess I should ask the question, who here has, has 2.0? Anybody? Anybody? Well, we know Andrea does, and Susan does, and I do. And I can't see the rest of the people if they're raising their hands or not. But if you do have it, um, drop it in the chat if you have 2.0. Joanne does. I do. Tony. Oh, yeah. Tony, of course, does. Warren. Nope. 
probably everyone in need of it. There we go. Okay, let me, oops, now that went, now that's hiding on me. Yeah, let me just close this. Okay, so uh, where were we here? So with these elements now in, in 1.0, if you were in a section, let's say, and you wanted to, I guess I just deleted everything out of here, huh? Or else I didn't put it in. So in, in 1.0, if you want to edit this, this section here, you got to click on that little gear. And sometimes if you had your padding really small, uh, you couldn't click on the gear here or on the row or whatever in, <coughs> excuse me, in 1.0 or 2.0, as long as this box is green, I can click anywhere and open up that section. So I can be over here and I can click on that and it will open up that section. Same thing with the rows. If, um, if I'm over here on the side of the row, I can click on that and open up the row. And, but if I'm in here and you see this little gear on either side, that gear, actually, if you click anywhere inside of there, oop, that opened the row. If you click here, it opens the column. So if you click inside the row, it opens the row. If you click on the gear, it opens up the column. And then same thing with an element. If I'm here, um, if I click on it, it opens up that black bar and then I got to go like that. But if I'm in an image and I click anywhere in the image, it'll open up the image. But the other thing you're seeing up here at the top is breadcrumbs. So you got here, you got your image and then you can click on the column and it'll take you into the column that that image is sitting inside of. And then it'll do the row and the section and right down to the body where we can turn the background back on. So it's all, it's all right there. It's so much easier to navigate through everything. So now let me add another section and we'll just do this. Oops. See, I, I didn't even have to do that because I was already in here. So let's just add a paragraph on one side and on this side here, we'll drop in a video. And now what I want to show you is come up here to the top to layout. See, we don't have those black boxes at the top anymore. And one of the things I always really did not like about this, if I came in and I managed this section and I hid this section, I cannot then go into the rows and see any rows that were inside of it. I can't see any elements that were inside of it until I turn the section and the row back on. So now though, you can come up here to layout and it shows you all everything right here in a tree, exactly what it's what it looks like. And you can just move up and down this and you can change this so you can say okay i want to see just sections or i want to see just rows or i just want to see flex elements which i don't have any in there what we can say everything but then if i come into this section and we open that section and i say to hide it on all devices then when we come back into the layout it's still there it's still here but it's grayed out so you see right there, it's got the little TV, the little desktop, and the, and the phone both grayed out. So that means it's not available on those devices. And uh, all right, what did I just do now? I'm still not, you know, I'm still learning this thing. So now, and in order to turn it back on, this is interesting too that they changed. So you got, you turn off the eyeball and that hides the element on all devices and you can't just come back in here and click on it and turn it back off. You actually have to click on all to make the visibility for all devices or for desktop or for, or for mobile down there at the bottom. Uh, so let me see here. What was next on the hit parade? Any questions at this point here? Nothing? Did I lose everybody? Are they all asleep already? Nope, we're here. Okay, well, I can see you. <laughs> You can see everybody. There's lots of pretty faces on this board. You what? There's lots of pretty faces on this board. Well, you can you can see what I can see here on the right hand side. So, um, okay. So let me see. Next up, what did I want to go into next? Let me see here. So we had the assets, and this was all the all the different stuff you can just plunk in there at any point. And so we can just grab a hold of this, pull it in there, and it takes a second usually to pop in. But that's that. And then, oops, how do I find this? Where's the, was that just an element? Okay, well, okay, there we go. Um, 
Okay, so let's go into, yeah, let's just go into this section. Let's start there first. That makes sense. Okay, so this is where we first run into the uh, style guide. So here we can click on this and it will show us all of our different styles that we created. And again, where you're going to go to that is you're going to, well, let me just show you this. So let's say I don't, I want to change something about this and how come I'm not, okay. Okay, edit theme section colors. Let's do that. Okay, so this just opened up the style guide. In other elements, you open up the style guide a little bit differently. But so, so this opens up the style guide and we'll just go back here, back to style guide. In here, you can set up your fonts, your colors, shadows, borders, and buttons. So you know what your color palette is going to be for this project, for this hub, for this funnel. And, and again, I'm real iffy still. And as far as I can tell, most of the people I've talked to at ClickFunnels are kind of still really iffy on what is a workspace? What is a, what is a this? What is a that? What are the different plans going to all entail? So it's still kind of a... It's, it's definitely a work in progress, but you can come in here and you can change out your fonts. So you got your extra large, your large, your medium, and your small fonts here, and you can change that out to be anything you want, including again, that custom font that I just put in here. So we can click on that. You can change out your difference. So you got your custom fonts, you got your sans serif, you got your serif, display, handwriting, and mono space. So you can more easily search through everything. Plus you can uh, type in something up here as well. So we just put in Noto. And so here you got all of your different Noto fonts. I had no idea there were so many of them. So, um, so there's a lot of them there. Let's get back out of here. There we go. And then you can, you can select your weight. So we got our Roboto now and Roboto has six different weights and so then we can go, let's go to a different one, open sands, and let's see, well, they got still six different weights as well. So some of them, you can have up to nine different weights. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here are all nine weights. So there's be a font weight of 100, 200, 300, 400, all the way up to 900 on your font weights here. So you're going to say, all right, I want all of my headline fonts in Montserrat and I want them all at a 300 font weight or what they're calling here light. All right, let's just make it regular. So that's 400. So 400 in ClickFunnels 1.0 would be your unbolded font. 700 in 1.0 would be your bolded font. So this is a good one to show that on. So this is four, five, six, seven. So you got regular and bold would be the equivalent of what you have in 1.0. So if you're hacking a site from 1.0 over to 2, migrating it over, just know that regular is, three, uh, regular is 400, bold is 700. And so then you got your weight. You can do your letter spacing, which we do here. Now, one of the things that I don't like about this slide bar is it's, it's just too much. I mean, I, I really think um, to go out to uh, a, a hundredth on, on this um, I don't know. And there's some in here that are even worse. The slide bars are. So I've, I've put in some tickets on that. And the one thing I really don't like is the line height. They have it in percentage. And normally you do line heights in M's or REMs in this case here. And if somebody wants to know what a REM is, I'll actually tell you. Um, so then you got your different, your four different sizes and you can put in how big you want each one of those to be as well again in rems in this case here they don't let you do pixels at all so you have to know what a rem is in order to really understand what you're putting in there but nobody's asking me what a rem is so i'm not going to tell you so so you get then you got your sub headlines and then you also have your content fonts here and then here you can set your base font size for the page and then if you turn this off you can set your base font size for your mobile as well so we'll, uh, so you can do all that and I'm just going to discard this for now and close it. And where you can find that is you come down here into the bottom left hand corner down here in the style guide and you can be right down there. And so let's close that back up, move this down again. And so that's the sections. And so you saw in there, there's also the ability to do it for, well, let me just turn it back on here real quick. 
You also have the ability to not only do this for fonts, you can do here, you pick out your colors and you say, let me get back on this. You say, okay, so our different sections, we're gonna have one is our really dark section and lighter and lighter and lighter on up. And what, what background colors do you want? What font colors do you want? Everything you set right in here. So we go to lightest, we got headlines, subheadline content, all the, your link, your icons, your bullets, you got your base color and you got your overlay color. So we can actually set an overlay color in here. Let's say we want that to be red, but it's only showing on the side over there. Um, and actually that's not working right. Shouldn't I be able to, okay, I guess I got to set my colors here first, don't I? Yeah, that's how that works. Um, you guys discard that. Then you got your shadows. You can put shadows around anything. And then we'll show you where you can then pull in those shadows. And then you got your borders. Again, they give you three different border styles, three different shadow styles that you can set up ahead of time. And the same thing with buttons. They give you three different buttons you can design. And then you can just pull them in anywhere you want. And we will close that out. And so then back to this section, we could do as we could in 1.0, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and you can make it sticky to the top and the bottom, and we got our padding. But then here we can open this up for background, and again, we can do a background color, background image, background gradient, foreground, background, the whole thing. And here's something they put in, I think this morning, background video. So not only can you do a background video on, let me see here. Can you do it on here? Yeah. So you can do a background video on the entirety of the page, but you can also do a background video now on every single section of the page and every row and every column, which I was on a call with some of the, the trainers this morning and we were laughing about that about putting a video into every single element on the page. It was a little bit overkill, we thought. But um, then you have your borders, and here is where you have your one, two, three. So when you set it up in the style guide, you set up your three different borders. Here, you can pick which border you want. So it's not gonna show me much of a border on this section, so maybe we'll show that on a different one. Um, so this is where you would do it. You can turn the border off and on, and as you do that, you see it opens up that box. And, and if you're just building it on your own, like I said, we'll show you on a different one here. Same thing with shadows, same thing with corners. Uh, we'll do that on a row because that's going to show up much better there. So let's go into a row then and walk through the exact same thing. And of course, you got your top margin. You have your width. You can notice here it's set at 1170 pixels. That again is identical to 1.0. When you set a wide, um, a, a full, full column, full width uh, section, the row inside of it is always set to 1170 by default inside of uh, 1.0. Here you can change it. And you could even go to percent. So we can just say we want it to be 100%. So that would be the equivalent of doing the CSS where we went in there always and we said, you know, the section dot container inner uh, width of 100%. This does it for you right there without any, without any CSS at all. And then, so again, we can do background here, same, same as before, images, et cetera, et cetera, uh, background video, border. So now here we can click on one, two, and three for our borders. And let's say we don't like any of those. So what we can do is we can just click the three dots. It'll turn, turn that one off, or is this set to two? Well, it left it in there. But then we can come in here and we'll say we want it dashed and we want it just on the top and the bottom and oops that turned it off wrong let me do this so if they're blue that's that's they're turned on and we're going to say we want a color of let's just pick this red color that we had in our palette and then we can make it go like this but now let's say we want it all four so let's just click that and now we can do a shadow around here so again, we can pick one of our three shadows. Uh, where am I losing it here? Here we go. Shadow one, two, or three on our shadows. Or we can turn those off and we can do an outset shadow. We can 
make it come down to the bottom and to the right and we can blur it out and spread it out and we're not seeing it why are we not seeing my or are we okay there we go it was stuck that's another thing you're going to find in here some of these things are still a little wonky they're they're not working perfect yet um but let's get let's bring our spread down let's bring this down so now there you go you got just a little shadow on the bottom and the right and again you would have to do that with css before all of this is built in here we can even make it an inset shadow if we want and put it right onto the inside you can type in numbers here or you can use your up and down arrow to move the numbers as well anywhere on here let's take that all the way down to zero and now we have an inset shadow inside of our rather ugly border and then of course we also have corners so we got corners and we're going to make these corners all 134 pixels but we don't want that on every one so we can click on enabled here where we can do separate edges I guess you can't click on that. I don't know where there's a box there. So now we're going to do separate edges. And so let's say that the top, let me see, we want the top left to be rounded, but we want the top right to be only, let's say, much, much less. And let's change that border. That is hideous. Okay. And then same thing down here, because you see this is sticking out. We don't want that. So bottom, what do we got? Bottom right. There we go. And we'll make that the same. Now, see, again, here's one of these situations where I really wish that as you moved this bar, it would be in like chunks of five. So every time you move it over, it'd just be 5, 10, 15. And then if you want to fine tune that, then, and, and you see there also when I clicked on that, it jumped to 134. So um, I put in a ticket on that the other day too. That's a, uh, that's a little too, too wonky for me. And then, so, and then let's, uh, we can go into, let's go here into a column. So you can do all the exact same stuff in the column. So I'm not going to walk through it, through it and bore, bore you guys to tears. Um, but same things, color shadows, everything else like that. And let's just delete this one out because it's pretty bad. Um, then let me add an element. All right. I'm going to see if I can duplicate what you did earlier, Susan. So, so we got one over the top of the other. Yeah. See, I'm getting the exact same thing. So this is being caused, this problem is being caused because this had too much of a negative margin on the top of it. And let's see if I can just fix this. See, with the margins, they these go in fives. But with... Uh, with everything else, they want to be in ones or even smaller increments. And so, yeah, like I said, I'm not excited about it. But now, so on this here, so let's go back in here. On this headline element, you got your different styles here. You get it from the style guide. So you got your small, medium, large, extra large. And then if you want to turn that off, you click on this button right there. And it opens up the editor. So let me click back out of here. Yeah, apparently I can't reclose it. Um, let's go into this element. Okay, because here we can click on edit style and that will open up the style guide for you again. So real quick and easy, boom, don't have to go anywhere, right back into the style guide or here we can override it. And then we can come in here and say, okay, I want something totally different than what my style guide was. And so I want a different font. And let's go with a handwriting font here. Let's go with Pacifico on there. Yes, it's completely illegible. And now, so apparently there's only one font weight for Pacifico because it won't let me open it. So let's try a different one here. Let's try that one. Huh. Well, is that common for these types of fancy fonts. Well, let's try something simpler. Let's just try Roboto. Okay. Huh. Maybe, I don't know. Does anybody know anything about that? It could be that that's those type of fonts. You can't have. Yeah, fonts. it is on some of the fancy ones. Okay. I mean, it kind of makes sense because you, you make that too fat and it's going to really mess things up. 
So again, here we can change the font size or font weight and change the font size. And you can either make that rems or pixels. Most everybody I would guess is going to flip it to pixels. So another nice thing would be is if they had this set as pixels, but if somebody asks me what a rem means, I'll tell you, but, um, so, and you got one for mobile and you got one for regular font, um, uh, one for mobile and one for desktop. And then of course you can turn, you can unconnect these two. And for some reason, it's not letting me. That normally works, doesn't it, Susan? What are you trying to do? I'm I was typing to, in the chat. I'm trying to, <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to disconnect the uh, desktop font size from the mobile font size. Oh, and it, it's... I think it is disconnected. Well, okay. Shouldn't I be able to turn it back on? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I know it's... when it's, it's blue when it shows that it's connected. That's I wonder I is because I have this turned on. But I had that turned on and it was connecting mine. My, I was in mobile view. Maybe try going into mobile view and then go into your settings. Oh, that could be too. Okay. Let's uh, kill that. And then we go to mobile. No. Um. Yeah, no, it's still, it's not blue. Shouldn't it be blue? Hmm. All right, Warren, you got a question? Yeah, Stan, can you tell us what a REM is? <laughs> <laughs> do you really honestly want to know, or did you just like, you know? I do, actually. I, I do, I do. I always confuse it, and I you just... think I know what it is, but I'd like to hear your explanation. To well, what do, you, what do you think it is? Well, I don't know. Is it like a relative unit, like of of based on like your page font base size? Very close. Yes. Uh, here's the actual explanation that I got from a guy who's been a college instructor teaching uh, web design, teaching um, you know coding uh, for for websites for twenty years, and he said that he had just learned this before he shot this video, which is probably like two, two years old. But EM, you, you will also see in ClickFunnels 1.0, let's just go here and we come to this element and come to advanced. And right here, you got line height of 1.3 EM. Well, what the heck is an EM? And that's, that's, it's actually pronounced M, like the letter M, because that's where it came from. So in old school typography, when they used to have to take the individual letters and put them in a row and then put the press down on them, how they gauged a, a set of fonts, set of, you know, I guess it's a font set is what you would have called it. How they gauge the sizes of each one of those pieces, each one of those letters was based on the letter M. So letter, the letter M was given the designation of being basically one. And so then let's say then the T was 0.75, the width of the M. So it became 0.75 M. And that's how old school typography worked. And so M in, 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 in CSS refers to the parent element. So if I say I want it to be 1.5 M on a font size, that will be 1.5 times the font size of the parent element. So in a case here, we got this, we got this element here, uh, this text element. Well, its parent element is going to be the column. So if the column has a font size set, the 1.5 M will be 1.5 times the size of the column. Well, if the column doesn't have it set. You're just going to keep going up the Dom tree up to the row, the section, and eventually you're going to end up at the root. The root is also the HTML element that makes up the entirety of the document. That's what we have in ClickFunnels 2.0 is REM. So it's the root M. So it's not the parent elements M. 
It is the root elements M, which is the entirety of the document. And where do we find that? We find that right there. That is your root M. So when we say we want a, a font size to be 1.5 root M, R-E-M, REM, however you want to say it, if you want it to be 1.5 root M, it's going to be 1.5 times, in this case, 18 pixels. So I would probably suggest with most people that you set this to like, move this down to like 10 pixels if you're going to leave it on the REMs. Because if they leave the default on all this, if they leave the default on all these elements to be rem, um, I, I mean, we're all used to using pixels. At least I certainly am. And so um, so right there is, so this says the font size is nine, well, 90 pixels is the equivalent of five REM. So it's five times 18 is 90. Unless I'm doing my math wrong, should be. Um, so that's what that's how we get that number. It's. I think the, I think the value of it is for when you do something like switch to mobile or smaller, then you can just have the one adjustment to the base font, and then everything scales down accordingly, theoretically. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's exactly why they do it. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what you you have here is you can. You can turn on your, you can turn on your root font here, your root, uh, your root M if you want there, or you can have it scale automatically, but I'm not sure if the scale automatically thing is actually working right. Um, it didn't seem to be on something I was looking at the other day. Um, so you still had to kind of update it on its own. And I was like wondering why this didn't change, but I never hit the update button. That's why. Uh, so I'll just leave it all as is right there. But yeah, so that's that's what it means. So you got your font size for your mobile and your regular device. And then um, again, letter spacing here in REMS. That's okay because we had letter spacing over here in M's. And But then we also had, well, letter uh, line height was in M's. Letter spacing, that's actually, that was in pixels. Can I, can I come in just one more oh, second? Oh, of course you can. <laughs> Before we leave that REM discussion completely yeah. behind. Um, it also shows its major importance when you start talking about ADA stuff. So if people are if people who can't read your site, it, your text is too small. That's how you're easily able to amp it up to bigger sizes for them is because you're, you're using the REM. So they could just click on a little plus sign that's just going to make it incrementally bigger and bigger and bigger without you having to do a bunch of calculations for yourself. Well, does it does it increase the size of each individual element or it increases the if you font. well you what you want to do is you would have you have everything go off your root element so you would you would set all your fonts to the rem specification right and then you would just when they're clicking the plus sign all you're doing is effectively changing that base rem unit okay. so everything else on the page um basically proportionally gets larger so you're your heading gets larger than it was. Your body text gets larger than it was, but incrementally, you know, based on what their percentage, basically, to that REM unit. Does that yeah. make sense? Well, that makes sense. Anyway, uh, that's it. So it's also very important for that aspect of it, it's giving people the ability to easily see your stuff. Although in today's browsers, you can just hit the, you know, increase the size of my page. So yeah, I mean, you hit Command Plus. Uh, my keyboard yeah. and all the font sizes get bigger and some of the, some images do some images don't is what i've seen on that too um well yeah but that's that's good to know but like i said i think also um you know if you set if you set your um uh, what did i click on here um if you set you are muted oh i managed to manage to mute myself that's what i did um if you set this to just 10 then makes the numbers real easy because you, you, you could think in your head that I want it to be exactly. 20, 24, 24 pixels. So you just put in 2.4. Exactly. And that's what they recommend you do is that you do set it to 10 for that very reason. It's yeah, easier. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I've never really seen, I, and I, 
I Googled this like a year or so ago, trying to figure out what was M and what was RAM and all that kind of stuff. And there is so very little out there. So I'm not sure where you found it, but um, it's it certainly makes more sense to do that instead of, I mean, they have the, they have the base, base one here for mobile 17. Well, I don't want to do that math in my head. I, I can, but I don't want to. Um, so that's just, that's neither here nor there. Um, then, so let me see here. We got letter spacing that's in REMS. Like I said, ours was in pixels in the old one. And then we got line height again. I've already beat that dog. Why this is, I mean, okay, Joanne, answer, answer this one then. Why is this in percentages versus doing it in REMS like we did on the other? I have no idea. <laughs> well, and, and I guess the next question is percentage of what? Um, usually it's the percentage of the its parent element. That's usually how that works. Well, so we got 95 we got 95%. Well, it's parent element in this case here would be, well, I get, well, I guess technically the parent element would be the headline wrapper element technically. Right. Uh, but it's a hundred percent of the height of the headline because the headline element, the headline wrapper is actually going to change height as we do this. I guess there's one way to find out. Let's just inspect yeah. the element and see uh because here we got the ella headline here's the wrapper here's the headline and we're saying line height of a hundred percent but what does it compute to uh line height of 90 pixels all right so it's a hundred percent of the pixel height because we had this was 90 pixels so the line height is now 90 pixels. So change your uh, your font size just to like change, change it to like font 70. Size. Yeah, yeah, change it so we can yeah see. Okay, so now we're down to 50 pixels. And here is, now that's our font size. Our line height right here is 50 pixels. So it's percentage of the size of the pixel, which then if the pixels are really in rems, I guess technically then that would follow through with the whole rem thing. Basing it off, essentially you're still basing it off of the root M then, the root font size. Well, and the percent is usually really helpful for um, uh, the rescaling of these things to keep them lined up better. So like that's what I do with my SVGs is use percentages usually because um, then it's easier when you're switching from mobile to tablet to the desktop. The percentage is just easier. Okay. Um, Keep things where they're supposed to be. <laughs> because there's always, because I mean, there's a theory too, and, and what they did here actually in um, in 1.0 is, if you ever noticed here, they got 1.4 is what it says here, but this is actually 1.4287 something, what the heck. Seven is actually what it computes as and what that number is is that's golden ratio typography according to bootstrap and it's not it's not a fibonacci golden ratio which is 1.6 something um which is actually i think what auto is that what auto does i forget but um so i mean i i get what they're doing but i I don't know. I guess I'll quit complaining about it. <laughs> They're not going to change it for me anyway, probably. Um, anything else in here that we didn't go over? Any other questions while we were messing around with that? Just open your mic and yell out. Um, then we have text shadows. And let me do this. Let me change this font color to white. Because now you can see the text shadow we have. So that actually kind of gives it a cool effect. If you if you like that kind of thing. I wouldn't use it on, on everything. But um, let's pull this down to black. And so there you got uh, 
just we got an offset of two we can make this see see right there as soon as you touch that this thing is such a fine hair trigger on it that it just goes flying all over the place but so we can make the we can move the uh, move it up and down on the y-axis. We can move it left and right on the x-axis. And then we can blur it. And then change the color. And then another little thing, if anybody's interested, is you can come in to an element like this and click on this. And you can come over here and you click on text shadow. Click on that right there. And there's a little built-in tool right into the developer tools where you can do the same thing. So you can move this around and play with it any way you would like right inside the developer tool if you know how to use that. And then, of course, in here, too, you can change the color right on the fly. And we could just uh, make it this color right there. And this gives you your RGBA, your hex decimal, all that kind of stuff. But if you want any more information on how to use the developer tools, just let me know. I got some training on it. So... Um, what else did we, okay. Was I done here? Oh, we can do icons in here too. Let's not forget about the icons. And so we got before and after icons, just like, well, I think actually in 1.0, you only had a before icon on your text elements. You had before and after on the buttons. And so we can come in here and let's just say we want to put in a spinner element in front of this. So we put in our spinner element. And then of course, if you change a little bit, you'd have to do a little bit of, uh, of JavaScript code actually to add the, um, add a, what am I thinking here, a class, add a class to it. You can actually make that spin if you want. And so we can change the font size, we can change it on mobile, we can change the color. But then the nice part here is you can actually change the margin on this. So you can actually set this apart. In the past, what we had to do was actually come in here and put in a space or two. And now you can actually set set some margin on there. So let me close that off. So you can set some margin on there. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool as well. And then, so that's uh, about it for that element. And I'm not going to go through every single element. So if anybody's got any questions, but we can look at an image. And hey, Dan, Tony yeah. asked a question in the chat. Yeah. Um, basically, like, what's what's the starting point? What do you... She asked, can you walk through the bit before creating pages? But you, Tony, I don't know if you got in late. Um, Dan did walk through some of that earlier. But she's basically just wondering, like, what should she start with? What should, we, should, what should she do first when she comes into her 2.0 account? Well, have you... Uh, have you gone through the hub training at all, Tony, in the certification program? Tony, Tony. Uh, no, not, not in any detail, no. Okay. Um, because, I mean, they kind of, they don't really get into this very much in there either. There's not a whole lot. Uh, let me just save this and then I'll bounce out. So Susan's just said set up this style guide. Where's that? I get well, the, well, that and was, the... And the other thing with the hub is is there's a... To actually, it, there's a requirement to to get your your um to get it live, as I understand, correct? To get, your, to get your hub live. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Greg goes through all that in the training. I oh, know. Sorry, to get the your site live. I'm just looking, you've got to set up your funnel hub, set up your blog, etc. Yeah, yeah. Well, first off, you had a question on the style guide. That's what we were looking at before. Yes. Okay, I missed are that. Looking, Sorry. Are you, are you looking at my screen? Yeah, I am now. Okay, so yep. we'll just go here. Demo style guide. I guess you got to click here to customize the design. And so it will open it up. But again, when you're inside of the actual page yourself that you're working on, there's like, well, this got all jacked up. Um, there's a bunch of different places. Yeah, something happened there. Let me Let me try a different one. Yeah. All right. Well, let's try 